In this episode, we're gonna be learning how to use a relay. And this is where things get really interesting because one of the main reasons you're going to be wanting to do automation is because you want to switch things like fans or lights on and off. This here is the ESP32. You can see that it has multiple GPIO pins, these pins over here and up the top here. And other devices like the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi also have GPIO pins. This specific device outputs at 3.3 volts on the pins themselves, but it outputs a very low amount of current. So basically, if you're trying to light up a light bulb, it just cannot put the amount of current out that it needs. So what we do instead is we use something like a relay and an external power source. So all that a relay is doing is inside this square over here, it's switching power that is coming in from an external source and it's switching it on and off. So basically think about a light switch on the wall. Instead of doing it by hand, it's doing it via a signal from the ESP32 or whatever the device you're using. On the left-hand side of the relay, there are three pins. The first one is for ground or negative. The second one is for power, which for this specific relay, it's five volts. So we need to use the five volt pin from the ESP32 to power this. And then the third pin is for signal, which is where the GPIO pin is going to be connected, which will then switch this on or off. On this side here is where the power is actually coming in and going out. And all that we are bothered with in terms of the power is the positive signal or the actual active signal. Depending on the switch state, it will either switch over to that side or it'll switch over to this side. To make it more obvious, let me just explain why there are three terminals there. Essentially, there is what's called normal open and normal closed. The middle pin is for the actual power itself. So if you've got an external power source coming in, you're just going to use the positive line going into the middle. And then you've got to choose which one on either side here you're going to be plugging in your output. And the reason you're going to be choosing is because at the moment, one of these are closed automatically, one of them are open automatically. Normally they're labeled. My device doesn't have it labeled, but one will be labeled NO and the other one will be labeled NC for normal opened or normal closed. And I've got my multimeter here set to check for shorts. So I can actually check, even though this is powered off, I can check which one is normal open, which one is normal closed. So if I have a look here, I'll put this on to the middle and we test there. So that's open at the moment, which means if I have the power coming in and the power going out over here, at the moment, this is going to be off. I have to actively send a signal to this on that signal pin over there before this will actually switch on and these two will be connected. So if we test the other one, we can see that that is normal closed, which means when this isn't active, then those two are connected. And that's important to know because it depends on your use case. Most of the time you'll want to connect onto normal open. So it'll be middle pin for input and then this pin which is normal open for your output because you only want this to switch on when it's got an active signal. What we need to do is we get some of these wires and we're going to just put this in. We're gonna have brown for positive, we're gonna have red for signal, and we're gonna have black for negative or ground. And on the ESP32, we're going to be using five volts to power it. So let's put five volts in here. We got red on IO13, that one. And then we have ground right next to that. And there we go. So that is all connected up correctly. All we need to do now is put some code on it and switch this on and off. And actually this is even simpler than getting sensor readings. Let's get the bare essentials in here first and then we'll have a look and see what we can do to make this a bit more interesting. So first things first, we need to set the pin mode for the actual pin we've connected, which is number 13, IO13. We're gonna set that to output. So that just tells the device that it's gonna put a signal out. It's not expecting anything to come in. 
Then what we need to do in the loop is digital write on pin 13. And we want to make that high. So that's going to switch it on. We'll then delay for five seconds, so 5,000 milliseconds. And then we'll turn it off. And we'll wait another five seconds. So let's see. That's all you actually need. And uh, this should actually do the job. So let's plug in our ESP32. And there we go. We can see that this is turned on, which is indicated by that LED. And every five seconds is going to turn on. And five seconds later, it's going to turn off again. So it's easy to see what's actually happening. If we switch on my multimeter, we're going to get the probes in there and see what is actually happening. As soon as it turns off, then it loses that connection. And we'll do the same on the other side. Now that it's on, when it comes off, this is the normally closed position. And we can see that it beeps when that connection is made again. So what we're going to do is we're going to power this fan. And we can see that there's a positive and a negative or a positive and a ground. And we're going to use this device over here which puts out voltage firstly we need to get that up to 10 volts there we go so we have that at 10 volts and what we're going to do is we could just power it directly from these 10 volts so green here is for the ground or the negative and red for positive and the fan should turn on. There you go. So all that we do now is we take out the positive, we leave the negative in there, and we send this positive instead to the center pin of our relay. And then we take an output, and if we just remember which one is normal open, normal closed, we can have a look here quick. That is normal open over there, normal open. And that's what we're going to connect to the power of the fan. And again, just to remind you why we're using the normal open, because we don't want to have this on all the time so that the only way to turn it on is to actually activate the pin from the ESP32. So there we go, we have this all configured. We have the power coming out from the positive here, coming into the center pin. Then there's power going out back into the device that we want to power. The negative is going directly from the source. Let's give this a go. We still have the code running, which is enabled to switch that on. And then five seconds later, turn it off and wait five seconds and then turn it back on again. Let's take a look at the code and make a couple changes to the delay and also let's output something to the serial monitor. So firstly, let's make this go on for 10 seconds and then off for five seconds. And what we can do here as well is we can put a little statement here saying serial serial.print line uh, fan is on make sure you do that before the delay else you'll only get that message once the delay finishes and if we do it over here as well serial.print line fan is off and let's send that off to the device 
There we go, it's on the device. Let's get the serial monitor up. And we'll see what's happening there. Well, nothing is happening there because we haven't actually begun the serial monitor. So let's start that off. And let's put that code back on. And we'll bring the serial monitor back. And there we go. Fan is on. And after 10 seconds, fan is off. Nice and easy, little bit of code to get a device to switch on and off. Let's do one more thing before we close off this lesson, and that is to create some variables. Let's make an integer called pin output. And we're gonna give that a value of 13. And now all we need to do is change pin output instead of 13. And what's handy about this is that we just need to change this pin number in one place. So if you decide you wanna change which pin is doing the output, then you just need to do it once at the top here and it will be reflected throughout the rest of the code. This isn't too much of a problem when you're looking at such a small amount of code like this, but when you're looking at far more complex bits of code, it makes a lot of sense to be using variables like this. So let's send this across. Nothing will change. It's gonna be exactly the same as before, but instead we're gonna be using this variable. Let's do a quick serial.println of the pin output. So I'm just gonna say pin output is and well, there's a couple ways you can do this. I'm just gonna keep this a little bit simple for now. There we go. And let's put one more bit of code here. One more, one more bit of text. Uh, beginning code. There we go. And there's one last thing to do which is this delay. We can set this delay based on a variable up here as well. So let's do delay on. Let's make it off for 30 seconds and on for five seconds. Now all we need to do is over here, delay on and delay off. And there we go, it has started. Fan will come on and then it'll go off for 30 seconds. Hopefully that gives you a good overview of how to use relays. We're gonna be talking about using some bigger relays, just like one of these in a future video, but it's not too different from using one of these smaller individual relays. So until the next time, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned something and stay spicy. I hope that you're enjoying this series and that you're getting some value out of it. And if you are, please consider supporting me on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash chili chump. And if you sign up there to support me, then you get access to my private Discord server where there are multiple channels that you can come have discussions around anything I talk about in my videos, things like growing and source making, and of course, electronics projects and automation. So it's a good place to come and ask questions if you have any questions around automation that you're doing for yourself or anything that I've talked about in my videos. And I really hope to see you there.